Hello, guys. It's great to be here. Very excited. Thank you very much, Divya, for introducing me and Evan for his great talk. Um, I have prepared some interesting stuff to you, uh, for you, so let's start with a quick question. Whoever used SVGs before? I want to see those hands, guys. Okay, okay. So from my animated meter, it's about 92% of you <laughs> raised your hands, which is good. Okay, that's a good start. We all know that um, we can use SVG for icons, right? Everybody, I think, almost all the 92% that raised their hand used SVGs for icon systems and implementing icons on the, um, as part of their work. So, okay. The cool thing about it is that we can animate those icons, which is great. If you are uh, into that, you can use um, Lottie files, which is a huge library of already animated icons, and you can use the Lottie to create your own icons, which is good. Okay, so who used SVGs for anything besides icons? Okay, I want to see those hands again. Not 92, but a little bit less. Okay, that's good. So we can use, of course, SVGs for graphics and illustration. Another good example is um, humans, which is spelled differently. Uh, it's a huge library of um, scalable vectors that you can play around with them and create your own uh, sets of backgrounds and graphics, etc., etc. So introduce this link to your designer fel uh, friends. They will definitely love you for that. It's a huge and open source uh, uh, website. Okay. Who used SVG for anything else besides the things that we mentioned? Uh, okay, I see like about, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 hands, which is a very small amount uh, in relation to this huge and great audience. So, what I'm saying is I think we are not using SVG enough. Okay, so quickly about me. My name is Dima, and I'm a Vue.js Israel community leader. Besides that, I'm a front-end architect. And besides that, I do a lot of stuff uh, as, as part of my day-to-day -day job. So one of the interesting things is the hashtag Hackathon Mentor. If you search it on social media, you will probably see that I part participated in like, I don't know, 25, almost 30 hackathons as a mentor, which is great for me. So come see me there. Okay. First place we encounter SVGs in relation to view is actually in the documentation. So if you ever saw this uh, slide, uh, slide or window, it's courtesy to Sarah Drasner. She created this uh, really nice uh, explanation of how to use it, how to implement it. So we can go directly to just copying the SVG inside the view file as just part of the template, which is good. Okay. If we don't want to do it, we can use uh, Webpack loaders, for example, the Vue SVG loader that helps us to do it pretty much automatically. And we can use the SVG files as just components. Again, good. I really love using SVG with Vue because the, the feeling that I get when I do it, when I code it, it's very natural. It's like um, almost the same as just a regular template. This is my. Um, um, this, this is actually why why I love to to combine SVGs when I'm working with uh, with SVGs and Vue. Okay, so are we going to talk in this specific talk about how how we should import SVGs with Webpack, or maybe how to use it um, as a sprite sheet with use and symbol? Well. Actually not. This talk is a little different. I will, I'm going to focus in this talk about the what. Um, I want to explore the vast uh, world of SVGs and what we can do with it beside the, I don't know, like almost 100% of you uh, raise your hands like icons and graphics and that's pretty much it. So let's explore other things. Okay. What I found out, and um, I'm actually <laughs> also guilty of that, is that we use SVG 
uh, we don't use SVG, we like to do it in our own way. So this is, of course, uh, a very basic example, this uh, Julia Park wrote those great avocados with just HTML and CSS, and we all like guilty in that specific thing. We need some graphical stuff, and we said, okay, we have HTML, we have CSS, it's a box, let's draw a box, like it's a div, basically, and add a background color, and that's it, okay, cool. So in some cases, it's okay, it's, it's a good idea. In other cases, in this one specifically, I don't think it's a good idea because it will be so much easier to just draw it in whatever program that there is to draw uh, scalable vector graphics and then do the animation again maybe with an external program. Okay, so what am I saying here? Should we always use SVG? I don't know, but we definitely can create everything that is done with SVG. We can create it with HTML and CSS. In some cases, it will be very easy. In some cases, it will be like, I don't know, mind-blowing, huge amounts of code, very difficult, uh, maybe not so performant. But we can. We definitely can. Okay. So SVG is so powerful that I encourage you to use it almost all the time. One example that I found on the web, those guys are lo uh, loading I.O., uh, it's a company from uh, Taiwan, I think. What they're doing is like an engine that you create this uh, cool background. You can play around with sliders and change colors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, when you get to the little uh, button of SVG, download SVG. Okay, you need to subscribe and pay money for it. It's just a business made out of totally SVGs, which is amazing, I think. So what else can we do with, uh, with SVGs? We can show emotions. This is a very interesting uh, website, Emotive Fields. It uses SVGs and SVG animations um, to express different kind of emotions. It has uh, some other stuff. If you go to there, uh, you can see like a lot of different animations. And it does it, in, in some case, pretty well. Like it's an animation, but it's it makes me feel something, which is in some cases uh, I do connect to like a maze, this puffy thing. Okay, we can do 3D with SVG. Who here knew the, that we can do 3D with SVG? Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay, not, not a lot, but that's an interesting uh, example. It's called uh, ZDog and it's an engine. Very interesting one because it's not actually 3D. What it does, uh, we, ca we create, as part of that uh, engine, uh, our 3D models, we code them, and then as part of the generation, it just flattens them out and draws them on an SVG plane, on, on a 2D plane using SVG, of course. So it's very interesting to do it. Uh, ZDog has also uh, an implementation using Vue, and it's really easy to play around with it. Like, two minutes and you're already doing 3D models and playing around with, it, with them on, the, uh, on, your web, uh, on your browser. Okay, so we can build design systems. So what do I mean design systems? Um, this, is a, this is a very cute example of um, how someone created a dog design system. It's actually built also with Vue. Uh, there is a dog component. And this dog component gets props like left ear up, color, brown, I don't know, right paw, wink, or whatever. And it generates them using one uh, SVG file inside that dog component that has all the different elements. And it's just like a basic V if to show them uh, using the props, except the color, of course. It just passes the color to the SVG itself. And it's really cute because it's puppy. So. We can do micro interactions using SVG. Some of those examples are, are uh, really similar to what I think the, that one, the, the label, it's really similar to what we know uh, basically from material design. So in material design, as you, I guess, at least most of you know it, when I'm touching an uh, input field, a text input field, there is this line, little line that expands beneath it. In most cases that I saw, um, 
it's, uh, it's made using a pseudo uh, after element that just expands the width of it with CSS animation. In some cases, I saw a hacky way to do it, like it's a div, uh, one pixel height div that is uh, invisible and then it's shown and uh, something strange. But we definitely can't achieve uh, this kind of effect with the simplicity that SVG gives us without using it. So with SVG, we can have this cool stuff. And I'm actually uh, interested to hear if someone knows about a full-blown uh, design system that uses SVG. Come talk to me later. I'm really interested to see if there is one, like with all those stuff that we see here. Oh, sorry, too much. Yes, OK. So we can do non-standard UI elements. What do I mean? Actually, what we see on the screen, it's like three checkboxes and uh, one single select radio button. It's amazing. It's um, the simplicity of creating this kind of um, checkboxes and, uh, and radio buttons and animations in general. It's, it's very easy. You can use software to, that, to create it. And if you wrap it in a, I don't know, let's say a view component, um, it's just a checkbox for the, the one who uses it. You can add props to it, checks, unchecks, etc. It's great. OK, one painful thing is logos. So I guess all of you um, who have websites or your companies have a website have a logo. I'm pretty sure that in some cases, your logos are using PNGs and to support uh, different resolutions. So you have uh, at least a couple of versions of your PNGs, like PNG and PNG X2 for retina displays. And maybe uh, if you have a responsive website and you have a couple of versions of your logo, like a big, small, medium. Uh, in some rare cases, I still see logos that's done with JPEGs, which is weird. but. I don't see any good reason to do it, but logos, in my opinion, should be done almost always 99% using SVGs. It's scalable, it's just there, and it will always work on every display, great. And, of course, the bonus point of logos, you can animate them. Um, so as part of the same file, it can be also animated on hover effect or whatever. Uh, we gain all the, uh, all the benefits of using logos with definitely SVGs and not anything else. Nice thing about that, not sure that uh, lots of you know about it, we can, um, we can put media queries uh, inside SVG files. So the SVG file itself, it's self, self contained, and the uh, media queries will response uh, based on the SVG size. So I mean, when I'm uh, putting my logo in my website, and uh, on mobile, it looks in one version, on desktop, it looks a little bit bigger in a different version. Not just that I'm using it, strictly using one file, and all the logic is inside, the next person that goes into my website, and you al always, uh, I don't know, I, I mean, almost always done it and know about it, OK, I need a logo of that specific company. Mm, should I search it on Google? Maybe Google Images? I'm not sure. Let's go to that website, right click the logo, save as. If you save this file as an SVG with the media queries inside, you get all the responsiveness inside the same file. So the person who will use your logo, depending on where he will use it and what size, it will scale correctly. We can do text effects. So the one that I really like is that one behind me. Uh, it's really hard to achieve this kind of uh, GUI effect around text using traditional, I don't know, like CSS or maybe PNGs or whatever. I, um, I actually, maybe there is a way to do it with a PNG, uh, but really old school and, and strange way. With um, SVG, it's just a filter that you apply and it works like magic. It's a real text. You can play with it, write it, and it works. Everything, by the way, in this example is real text. You can do art with it. So what do I mean art? If you do creative coding, uh, you can and you should play with SVG first, in my opinion, 
because it's so accessible and so simple uh, and so easily readable, um, in opposed, of course, to uh, WebGL and Canvas and the other options that we, uh, that we have. So um, actually, Dexter from yesterday showed me that he uses SVG for creative coding. Um, he has some very nice examples on his um, Instagram account. OK, so this one, I need my mouse. OK, we can do SVG morphs. Yeah, OK, this is working. Yeah, you see it? Cool. So what do I mean SVG morphs? Uh, SVG has paths. So we have this SVG element, very simple element. I hope you can see it, guys. And um, when I'm hovering with a mouse on it, so the only thing that I'm doing is rewriting the path, which is very simple to achieve. When I'm rewriting the path, I'm getting this very nice morphing effect. I'm added a uh, little animation to it. It's really easy to, to play with it. So morphing in, in SVG is one very powerful uh, feature. We can do the line drawing effect. I'm pretty sure that all of you are familiar with many kinds of, uh, of variations of this line drawing effect. The middle one is actually an example from Chris Square when he connected the, the line drawing as part of the uh, scroll bar. So while he scrolls the page, the, the line is uh, filling in. We can react to mouse events based on shapes. This is a very interesting and pow powerful feature, I think. So uh, if you can see on the left example with the diamond, when I'm hovering the SVG file, the mouse is only um, affected when it's on a path. It's actually an SVG, which inside uh, there is an anchor, uh, anchor tag that uh, wraps the path itself. And also on the right, so. It, there is no a bounding box that I need to, um, uh, that is triggered when I want to hover only specifically on the path. We can be very creative uh, with backgrounds. So this is a very interesting and strange example that I recently saw uh, in a talk from, um, from Lea Viru, sorry. Uh, when, why is it interesting? Because what you see here is just an uh, empty body element. And what I have is a background image with an SVG code encoded as, as part of the data URI. And uh, I need to do some uh, basic escaping there, but it's not, uh, not a, bit, a big of a problem. And the text here. Hello world is uh, actually a live text. It's like hello and an emoji. So I have a text and an emoji as part of my background image. And I can do whatever I, can, uh, I want with my background image, like scale it and repeat and whatever. So this is a very interesting example. Where is my mouse? Here. OK. We can do filters and uh, text effects. So. The left example is a live text. And it has an SVG filter on it. And the right example is really a basic one. I can play around with the color. So how is it made? It's actually an SVG element uh, in the shape of the t-shirt, just placed on top of a very simple image. And um, the SVG path has a, a a multiply filter. So I can play with all the colors that I want, and it's very easy. It's like just an image and an SVG path. Oh. Yes, OK. And we can do a full blown website with SVG. So this is actually a very interesting example. Uh, it shows the presidents of United States. And why is it interesting? Because it has a mix of everything that you ever wanted. It has SVGs, and it has Donald Trump, and yeah. And it has hover effects using CSS. And the funny thing, 
uh, well, at least I find it funny, the graphs here are using Canvas. So, okay, everything is SVG, why this is it's Canvas, but okay. What tools do we have to do it? We have a lot of tools, actually. Some of them you already know, like Sketch, Figma, Adobe Illustrator, uh, After Effects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Some of them are less known, but pretty powerful as well as SVG Editor and maybe Animator by um, Haiku. Uh, After Effects actually is working very well um, in combination with Loti. Loti is an extension to it. It uh, the designer, the, the actually the animator that used After Effects can create any kind of animation he wants, then export it uh, as an SVG file with a, a supplementary JSON file that translates all the animations to that SVG. So, and of course, we don't have to use tools. We can do it uh, just by ourselves. And I wanted to show you a basic example. Yes, this one. Yes. Okay, so this is a basic um, component. It has a box SVG inside it. I'm getting props of color and size. I'm connected my green sock, which is a great tool to animate on the web, not just SVGs, but just SVGs uh, especially. Uh, creating a basic animation of moving to the right and rotating 90 degrees. It took me like, I don't know, three minutes to do it. Of course, it's a very simple one, but it's very easy to play with it. So what's next? Maybe SVG in virtual reality? Yeah. I actually don't know, but um, I really want to encourage you to use SVG more. So let's recap. Well, why should we use SVGs? It's resolution independent. And what I mean is when I put an SVG logo on my website a couple of years ago, and today we have uh, like 8K displays, I don't care, it just works. I don't need to add another like X4, X8 PNG file or whatever. It's a syntax. We all know pretty well HTML, I guess, so by design we all know SVGs. The file sizes. Uh, of course, it depends on the graphics that, uh, that we want to show, but if it's a vector graphic that was designed by anyone, it probably should be uh, in a vector format. Don't see any uh, good reason to do a vector graphic, then save it as a PNG, JPEG, or whatever. It has a multicolor support, um, which, for example, icon fonts don't have. We can use only one color there. It's animatable, as we saw already. Perfect browser support, I would say. Almost all browsers support SVG out of the box. No uh, additional stuff needed. And SVG is pretty old. It's like 20 something years, I think, uh, old. So almost everything supports it. Accessibility, as I showed uh, in two of my examples, there is a text inside the SVG and it's readable. Uh, it's readable for search engines, and it's readable for screen readers. Yes. It's semantically correct. What do I mean semantically correct? When I need to draw, uh, when I need to show some kind of an image, illustration, or something, why should I use div and spans to do it? And the last one, the ease of uh, use. We have, as we saw in the last slide, a lot of uh, tools, a lot of applications that we can create, animate, and even uh, I think one of them has uh, by design export to view components. So my key takeaway for this talk is use SVG, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dima. That was Thank incredibly you, informative.